Hello again, folks, and welcome to the next part of our review of Norwegian Prima, our cruise out of Galveston in December 2023. Today we're going to talk about ports of call. Um, first day was at sea after sailing away from Galveston. Our first day was at sea. The weather was a little rough, but we managed to be okay hanging out at the dive club, spent having a good time there. Uh, our real first port of call was Cozumel. In Cozumel we docked um, at a main cruise port, which is a few miles away from the main town. And we decided that we've seen the touristy village of the cruise port enough times already, but we really didn't care about going to town either. Our options for any kind of water-based activities are quite limited because of the weather. Uh, it's pretty choppy today and very windy. So you know what, the ship is beautiful enough that today we're just gonna hang out here. And those are all the views of the Cozumel you will see in our video. Sorry about that. But our next stop was Harvest Key, Belize. Harvest Key is NCL private island. But interestingly enough, we got here fairly late in the day, right around 10 o'clock, which still gave us plenty of time to enjoy the island. The island has a relatively small beachy area on one of the sides and mangroves on the other. Plenty of loungers, but shade can be at a premium because there are only so many umbrellas and only a few somewhat immature palm trees. We found our spot almost at the very end of the beachy area here and enjoyed the time. A few things about the island to keep in mind. First off, you have to bring your towels from the ship and sometimes there could be a line as you disembark to get those towels. There's also a bit of a walk from the dock uh, to the mainland. Uh, there are trams, free trams running uh, to get uh, those who are, have difficulties walking to the destination. All in all, it seems to be pretty, pretty efficient. Oh, and that uh, boardwalk is covered, so that's, that's quite nice considering the sun. Island offers a couple of restaurants and quite a few drink or bar options. One thing to keep in mind as well here is that even if you have the beverage package, it doesn't work here on the island. You have to pay cash or credit card. Same goes for the restaurant, which is a bit interesting because all the other private islands we've been to, all of those included drinks and beverage on private islands. Not a big thing, just something to be aware of. But all in all, we enjoyed our time. Found a nice lounger at the almost very end of the property. Swam a little, snorkeled a little. Not much to see under the water, so I was glad that I didn't bother bringing fins, just a snorkel. Few fishes, a little muddy here, very sandy, nothing really to expect. So if you've heard that Belize is famous for its underwater life, it certainly is, but just not this part of an island. Some activities include volleyball, soccer. You can also rent pedalboard or kayak on the other side. And of course, the infamous zip line. Of course, one thing that's always free is walking along the seashore, collecting seashells and swimming and snorkeling. Despite the warnings about jellyfish, we didn't see a single one as we snorkeled, so that was a good thing. All in all, a nice area and a very pleasant time. And our next stop on this journey is Rotan Island. We've been here before. We believe, <laughs> believe it or not, we explored on foot the mountain ridge that's right behind us. It was really, really nice walk back then. Oh, we got a little wiser and a little older, so I don't think we're going to do that again. So uh, what we're going to do today instead, we're going to just walk down into town. Uh, that is uh, where cruise port is located. We don't expect much from this adventure rather than just kind of walk through town, see what it has, try to get a little bit of a glimpse of a local life. Uh, a little unusual, but you know what? We are a little tired of touristy things. So let's do something just slightly different. Let's see how that works out for us. Yeah, for those who are anchored here, it's a little less fun because you kind of have to wait in line here and then the tender boats have to wait in line and yada, yada, yada. So I guess we're lucky that uh, we got ourselves a uh, place to dock. 
route today, the main attraction of the Port of Rotan is all of the construction that's going on. Just kidding, of course. But someday it will make for a nice place or even nicer place. Looks like they're building a pool and more shops. It's all good. Just to give you a bit of a taste, very busy today with three ships in port. I'd imagine it can probably take more than that, but uh, only ours is a semi mega ship to others. Well, no, maybe, maybe I'm wrong here. But anyway, it's uh, pretty busy. I would, I would say, all three ships would probably get about close to six thousand people. I don't know how many of them decided to get on shore, but a little village is a little confusing to navigate due to all the construction so you kind of have to go around and around and kind of to a different side but it's all good so whoo that's loud somehow reminds me of uh, when you arrive to Cancun airport everybody's just trying to get in in the action it takes a little while to get out of the crowds of folks that are trying to sell you services and taxes and everything else as always it's a little more annoying than it needs to be but hey what are you gonna do everybody has to make make a buck or two Go past, you guys. to be perfectly honest there's really not much to do here in town but we just wanted to kind of wander for a little while last time when we were here we did take an adventure tour hiked uh, to the top of uh, one of the mountains that was actually a lot of fun other than that, uh, there is good swimming and snorkeling on the north and west shore. Uh, very safe, very kind of civilized area there. But uh, here, for the most part, it's just touristy area and, uh, you know, you get what you expect. Hey, doggy, be careful there. It's a jungle out there, bud. It's a jungle out there. <laughs> you know, locals are making what uh, they can. And that's why we're not really, we're trying to be as nice as we can to those who try to get a few bucks out of tourists. So totally understand some of us been there, you know, in our earlier life and careers. So it is what it is. Life is different. And this is what uh, this is all about, making sure that everybody gets along. From what we understand, Rotan is an upscale part of Honduras. Uh, it is an island, of course. And if you make it to this island, you have up more opportunities than you would have in the mainland. Mainland is uh, very much uh, ridden by corruption, gangs and everything else. Here, being a little closer to tourists and ships, uh, there's a little bit of, uh, I guess there's more opportunity for a better life. However, however much better this life can be. So town has its abs and valleys, but we appear to, ha appear to be in uh, kind of central part of town now still some touristy stuff and there are quite a few tourists ahead of us so we kind of think they know where they're going well Irina thinks they know where they're going I tend to think otherwise there are a lot of dogs but they don't seem to be stray and they seem to be super friendly at least for the most part so far we didn't ex experience anything that uh, we wouldn't be comfortable with There's a local bank. It's not all that different from our part of the world, is it? It's just different, right? As Irina have mentioned, church is probably the best looking building in this town. And it is maintained as well as it can be maintained in a tropical climate. Well, kudos to them, good deal. But all in all, one has to also think that the weather in this part of the world is not really conducive to maintaining buildings and everything else in a good order due to hurricanes, a lot of rain and everything else. So again, if you've never been to a tropical spot, uh, this is kind of what to expect from a typical Caribbean destination, island or otherwise. But if you have, Honduras, I mean, doesn't seem to be too crazy bad, too crazy good, just somewhere in between on our 
list of destinations. We probably visited about half of Caribbean islands. Here I, pro I definitely wouldn't rent a car just by myself simply because I just, well, I don't, to start, for starters, I don't speak Spanish at all. And it's just a little too hectic to drive here, just not something that I would enjoy. But um, if the weather would have been better, we probably would have gotten a cab and got to the other side of the island to enjoy some beaches, a little bit of diving, snorkeling, whatever the case might be. Christmas shop, but of course you have to get Christmas tree whether you're in tropics or not, right? We always buy souvenirs, just little things, typically some dex decoration for Christmas trees. And whenever we buy souvenirs, we ask for a change in local currency. Bring an extra souvenir for ourselves. Yeah. It looks pretty cool though, I like it. And with this newly bought souvenir t-shirt, Irina blends in with the local workers. I think there's a way to make a quick buck or two here. <laughs> and in the beautiful afternoon, after spending half a day in Rota in Honduras at around 3.30 or 4 o'clock, it's time to set sail for our next destination. Our fourth and final port of call was Costa Maya, Mexico. This port grew a lot and now takes up to probably four ships, at least that we can see. As one can imagine, when you have three and a half mega ships in port, it gets pretty busy and hectic. Wow, just tons of folks walking around in all direction, trying not to run into each other. And the moment we waited for, for six days of a cruise, we're arriving to beautiful, historic, almost abandoned Costa Maya, Mexico. Oh, what a lovely sight. There's hardly anybody on the streets and so much history. For those who don't get my sarcasm, the damn thing was built as a pure tourist attraction in the middle of nowhere at the side of a little tiny fishing village. I'm trying, baby, I'm trying. Okay, wait a minute. Wow. And we thought it was touristy, what was it, seven years ago, maybe 10 when we were here last time. Now it probably grew, well, doubled, tripled its size. So basically just uh, everything you expect. Typical small shops, not so small. Bars, things of that nature. And it started to rain on us. But tell you what, I think in those short few minutes, We've got as much flavor of Costa Maya with four ships in port as we ever wanted to have. A quick picture with the Christmas tree and back to the comfort of the ship. And actually almost seriously speaking, this is a pretty awesome view of four ships. Well, you can't see ours is hiding behind MSC, but four ships parked. And you can kind of appreciate how wide wonder of the sea is and tall of course but how wide it is compared to radiance and that would be our final stop heading back to galveston should be there in a day and a half or so weather permitting meanwhile stay tuned for the next installment of our story about this cruise to be continued cheers <laughs>